Hello everybody, welcome. Um, yeah, we're back in the studio and I am... Um, what I've got to do is I've got some pestles and mortars here that we've got to just finish off. So what I'm going to do is put the camera down here on the wheel head and just show you how we go about doing that. Um, so without further ado, we will go there. We will go to the wheelhead where the where the action is. <laughs> okay, right. Let's just focus in down there. We'll get some additional. We'll get some additional lighting on as well. Just wanted to run through with you um, what I what I do here to finish these off. So, da -da 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 -da. absolutely beautiful day today. Gosh, sunny, warm, but it's also just nice. Great day for drying pots. So I've got some pots outside there uh, that I am drying off, which are some pots that we're going to be putting into the into the kiln and. They are the ones that have been raw, raw glazed, so they're just going to be once fired straight up to, to stoneware temperature. Right, so just cleaning the wheel off there. Okay, so you've thrown your, 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 your mortars and now you want to... Now, if, you're, if you've been using your throwing stick well, you'll find that there's not really much more to do here other than just to thumb them off like that with your thumb and that's it basically they're finished um, what I you know the the inside shape of the of the mortar here is quite important that it's a nice round shape and that it's not got any kind of ridges in it if you follow me so what I'm going to do is as well as one can get them I have, but I'm, 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 I'm actually, I'm just thinking to myself, you know, the, the inside surface of the, of the, of the mortar, for example, if you're using a clay which has got a little grog in it, which this does have a little grog, the grog, you can, I can feel on the surface, the grog standing up. So I'm thinking what I want to do is use a rib like this on the inside on the inside here if you follow me to compress the inside surface of the mortar so there are no little pieces of grog that are standing up high all right so I'm going to use I'm going to try to use this fella here on the inside, this it is. Let's come off the wheel. One doesn't have to use that actually. This, in fact, may not be the best thing to use. In fact, even as I talk, I'm having another idea, and that is. Hang on a sec. Let's look in my box here. Yeah, I've got here. couple of nice little burnished or polished I should say stones. And I'm going to take one of these stones and I'm going to put it down in the bottom there. And I'm going to put my fingers onto the stones and I'm going to use the stone And what this is effectively doing is pushing down all those bits of grog that are standing up, compressing the surface. Because one of the problems with a handmade pottery pestle and mortar is 
Um, but unless you're using a clay that's very fine, and the best clay to really use is, is porcelain, of course. Well, I do do some, some pots in porcelain occasionally, but I, I... Actually, something I want to do is get down to doing a bit more porcelain. When I was just recently away at Anderson Ranch in Colorado, I, I did throw some porcelain and... Uh, actually, it's the first porcelain I've thrown in since I've been over here in the US. And uh, I was pleasantly surprised it came out quite well. I was quite pleased, so... Alright, so now what I've done is uh, I've compressed that. I mean, you're probably not going to be able to see that but it may have a slight slight shine to it. I recommend you do that. Um, let's see, one more here. Now what you can do, if you haven't done the best job in the world of using your throwing stick, is just to quickly put them upside down on the wheel head. And with your, with your trim tool, All right, you're just going to very, take a skim off there. I mean, just a very little, like that. Okay. And that's all you need. Again, I'm gonna put him down on the wheel head. Get my little burnishing stone. Just put him on the inside there. Press him, press him down, make sure he's on center. Yeah, he's on center. Now using that stone, working the stone from the inside, from the centre of the inside, moving it. I always say to people if they buy a pestle mortar, that I recommend that before they use it, they take the pestle and grind it in with nothing in it, you know, and do, and do that for sort of like 10 minutes. And then wash it out. And then, 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 it, then it's okay to, to use, you see. It definitely does make a difference. It makes it a more hard, compact surface, which will, you know, what you don't want is, is grit in your food, is it? Or bits of particles of the, the clay body that have kind of gr you've ground off. You've not only ground up, ground up your seeds, but you've ground the... Um, you've actually ground the, 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 the mortar. As I say, now this one, I'm going to... Now, see how many of you out there are, are, are observant. You know I've spoken about well, what I use to cut off my pots is a, is a piece of piece of fishing piece of fishing line. You know I've got some of that um, 20 pound breaking strain fishing um, fishing nylon, and I've used that for a long time to cut off my pot. But I actually, I've always really always liked the, you know, the, the cut off like that, you know, with a, a pattern, like a shell pattern. But of course you can't get that with a, uh, with a nylon, because it doesn't have any weave to it, it's flat, isn't it? So, I was actually discuss discussing with my brother John in England about this and saying, asking him if he used a, 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 a twisted wire to cut off, and they, they do. And of course the advantage of, of a twisted wire over just a flat wire is that it, it allows more air to get in under the, under the, under the pot when you cut it. Of course the, the typical twisted wire that you 
that most people, most people's wire that I I see, I'll get one just to show you, just so we're on the same page with what we're talking about. It's one of these guys. Um, this is your typical wire, isn't it, that you'll find in most throwing kits or most pottery suppliers will sell you. It is kind of twisted, but it doesn't leave any kind of pattern on the pot because it's too fine a twist. Another fault with these wires is, of course, they're far too long for use on the wheel. And they ought to, manufacturers who make these wires for these throwing kits are obviously not potters, are they? If they were, they would have sorted out that problem a long time ago and made wires that are about you really want 12 inches between the toggles, okay? 12 inch length of wire. This is far too long and of course when, every time you use it you've got to wind it around your hands like this to shorten it because it's too too long. So these kind of wires I don't really use here on my wheels because they're the wrong kind of wires. But anyway I'm getting off the point. Well, what I'm talking about is the weave here. Okay this is a twisted wire but it's it doesn't leave any pattern on the bottom of a pot. You won't get a pattern like that on the bottom of your pot with a wire like that. Um, on the other hand, you don't want to be cutting off your pots with a, with a wire like that, which I think they call over here a wiggle wire. That's really for decorative faceting or cutting off and that kind of thing. Um, so you want a wire that's going to cut off your pot and, le and leave some air under the pot so that when you come to lift the pot it lifts off easily, you see. Anyway, to cut a long story short, I recently, in my last workshop that we had here, um, one of my students came and they, uh, and they came with this, and I said, oh, let me have a look at that a minute, let me have a look at that. So I had a look at it with them, and I said, well, that's very interesting, because it's, it appears to be one single wire, but it's, it looks like it's twisted, but it isn't actually. And, um, and Dave, who get, in fact, kindly left it for me here, he said, no, it's, it is, it, it is a, a single wire, and what it is, is from a, it's a guitar string, and I forget the one that he said that, that it was, but it's the guitar string. I think it, it was, I don't know if it was, it was, it was 30 or something. I can't remember then. I, anyway, I'm going to have to go and investigate it myself. But anyway, um, this is actually, it's a nickel guitar string. And it's just been pulled out, you know, until the, because it was like a spring, you see, but you can pull it right out and it, until it's fully pulled out. And it looks like that. All right, and that's a and that's a shorter length of wire, of course. But that is what is giving that nice shell-like pattern, um, which is rather nice. So, thank you, Dave, for that. If you're watching, I appreciate all the little gifts and all the things people leave behind, like this little wiggle wire. Somebody left me this, and I forget who they were now, but. Whoever you are, thank you again. Um, let's get back here to what we're doing. So, putting in that little stone, starting at the at the centre. Just a bit of light pressure and just moving out. You can only move out so far, and the, and the pot comes unstuck from the wheel. All right, but. Good job. Um, so another one. Oop. I know some of you may think, well, Simon, just put some lumps of clay around it and then it won't move. Well, yeah, I know I can do that. You know, I'm, I'm lazy though, you see. I can't be bothered. 
and I've got my finger here, you see, so it stops it flying off. Um, you know, you learn to, to work. You learn to work quickly and you dispense with things like lumps of clay. Lumps of clay have their place for certain things, but for certain other things, it's a bit like, you know, when you're learning to ride a bike, you have those supporting wheels along the side. There comes a time when you actually learn your balance. You don't need those supporting wheels. So, so it is with pottery. We come to a point where we don't need the supporting wheels. So, and incidentally, the, the method to arrive at coming to that point where you don't need those supporting wheels is keep practicing isn't it and it's the practice that brings the uh, the fluency it brings the speed I'll have to get my seal to seal those, I've got it here. We always used to, and when I was at the pottery learning, my dad would say, okay, will you put, where do you put the seal? Will you put the seal right there where that sort of pattern meets? Um, we put that there, like that. Makes it makes it look so well. I've got a few more of those to do, and I don't want to go on and on and on doing those. And then I I, I actually wanted to show you also because I've got here under some paper, some not paper, some plastic. I got the, these guys, you see, uh, the the pestles, and I want to I want to take take one of these. I've been trying to keep these slightly damp. Okay, so the top of the pestle, you can give a little. You don't want it to have a point on the top. You want it to be a continuous round, you see? So, I'm just doing that. It's actually maybe not the best thing to do it on the wheel head because it's got like, um, uh, there's those rib ribbings there, you know, those concentric circles. So, what else can I use? Well, I'll try this. Because this looks see, there's there's a lot of finishing off things like to do with pottery, aren't there? They're not just the not just the making. All right, so I want to. Do that. Now this end here, you know, to get it a satisfactory end here is not so easy, but I, I just kind of push it all in like this, you see. I, the idea is that I want to get it nice and nice and rounded, you see. So kind of pushing it in the clay. Try to get a nice, smooth, put maybe a little bit of water in the palm of my hand, you see, like that. Take that and then rotate it with a little bit of water in the palm of my hand. Try to... What you don't want is a pestle that is 
is uncomfortable in the hand and you know after you've been using it for a few minutes you go ooh you sort of develop like a blister on the inside of your inside of your hand. Alright so that that's the that's the finished um, finished festival which will go in there like that. It can lie there in the in the in the pouring lip. You see. You know uh, uh, when we're doing these making these things these are uh, things we there's a lot of things to consider aren't there. Um, Practical considerations, um, which are important for us as makers to take note of, that when the person is actually using this, you've got to literally, if you're a maker, you've got to put yourself into the position of the person who is the the user. And of course, that means you've got to make stuff and you've got to use it yourself at home before you sell it, really, in an ideal world. Okay, so again, now this, this end, I'm kind of pushing it in, you see, like that. Pushing it into the center. De -de -de -de. Okay, so you push it in, seal it over at the top there, and dip it in water, put it in the palm of your hand, and just turn it around like that, you see? I want to make it look smooth, I don't want to make it look like it's knobbly. Now remember how we fire these in the kiln. Now these you can actually fire. Uh, they're not. They don't have any glaze on them. All I do is spray some wood ash on the outside, and so they can actually be once fired. Once fired in the kiln. The thing about that is what you have to really be sure of is that they are absolutely bone dry because. You know, as we know with, with pots, you put them out in the sun to dry. They can have the appearance of being dry, can't they? But they may not be dry, or as dry as you thought they were. And when you put them in the kiln, after a while, the remaining moisture that is hidden, say, in the depths of something like that, because you see that's fairly thick, isn't it? So there could be some hidden moisture hidden down in there. So uh, they can explode in the kiln. In fact, I, in the end, I, when I'm making these, I decided, no, I'm not going to bother. I had, I think, I had one blow up, and it kind of like I had to stop the kiln, and I had to literally unpack the whole kiln and repack it again because one of these had exploded and just sent shards of raw, unfired clay just everywhere inside all the pots. It, I had to take the whole lot out, clean out the whole kiln, clean out all the pots put it all back and then I thought to myself this is not worth it I thought they were dry you see but so so I have always tended to um, to bisque those in actual fact uh, you know I'm trying to go over I'm trying to make the mental adjustment of going over to do more raw fired pots um, with the idea of saving time, saving fuel and having a little bit more of a direct approach to the work because when you're making and throwing uh, and doing once firing you've got to f 
carry through what you're doing from the making stage through to the glazing stage all in one before before the pot dries you see so um, it's a slightly more rhythmical way of working rather than having this sort of phase where you stop dry everything put it in the do a, a firing in the kiln and then you um, and then you have to take it out, unpack it, and then you've got to glaze it. It's, it's kind, of, kind of like cutting out an operation. So, but I, you know, there's pros and cons to it. Both ways of doing it. Okay, so there we are, a little bit on um, finishing off pestles and mortars. I hope that's been um, I hope that's been useful to you, and uh, I encourage you have a go at making pestles and mortars. As I say, they're not they're, the, the actual mortar part. This part is quite easy to make. Uh, the throwing, perhaps, of the of these pestles is not so not so not so easy but you know you, have, you get used to that you throw them off the hump take a, a largest lump of clay put it on the wheel and then you center it up the end part at the top and then you just pull out pull out a, a bit and form the form the top and that's the hardest part but have a go if you don't have a go you'll, you'll never you'll never know will you so yeah we've got a workshop this weekend I just mentioned that, you know, where we've got space actually, we've got about three spaces, so maybe if you're deliberating whether to come, come along, because, um, you know, we've got a nice breezy airy workshop here, and hopefully you'll get some good attention and make some good practice, uh, good progress. Okay, Simon Leach saying, keep practicing. See you soon. Do you need, do you need? Did <laughs> it?